is directly related to what I said earlier about format. So we don't have one retention period for email. Um, it's going to be determined based on the content of what you're writing about. And that sounds really complicated initially. Um, I will talk a little bit about how we can simplify that, how agencies can kind of um, look at each user or each role and kind of try to predict possible retention periods. So that's something that's been part of the national conversation because email is not just an issue in Oregon, it's an, it's an issue across the entire country. Um, I recently, I've never heard that, Stephanie. I recently, even at the federal level sometimes. <laughs> um, no, um, I recently read about a state, I won't say which one, that their state archives didn't have any email from any um, government entity, no governor's emails, nothing like that had ever been transferred to them. We aren't like that here. <laughs> we have all the governor's emails from um, Kulingoski up until Kate Brown. Um, we've got, because that, that's kind of part of our role is taking when, when someone, uh, when their administration is over, including the Secretary of State, all of their records come to us for preservation um, and to provide access long term. So that means that we're not saying, oh, well, we just want your boxes of paper. We're now getting huge data dumps. And part of the way that we're trying to stay in front of that is setting up all the governor's office users with an electronic records management system that ties directly to their email so they can file it themselves and organize it how they think it should be organized. And that will help us long term provide access to that instead of getting a thumb drive or a, a external hard drive, which is what had happened with Kitz Haber, um, and then having our core accessions archivists say, what now? <laughs> you know, three just million three million emails to sort. Um, so we, the more agencies that we can work with, um, and we've now got our front office, our new Secretary of State totally integrated, and, and we're getting his email filed. And that doesn't just help us with the long-term preservation, it helps us with public records requests. So we can stay in front of that instead of getting the request and then scrambling. So it's selfish on our part, um, but we are lucky that they are very supportive of this project and kind of the goals of transparency. So that has been working out really well for us. So the problem with email, why it's on this presentation, um, is that as we're all sitting here, we're getting a ton of email, right? And it just keeps coming, especially um, with some of your the director level um, or elected official level employees. Um, usually the IT department, and if you're a DAS supported agency, DAS would be this um, entity that is, is controlling deletion. So I know with any DAS supported agency, um, email is automatically being saved upon sending and receiving. And there's no end in sight for that. They don't have retention periods applied to your email at this point. And that's a conversation that we've been having with them with Alex Pettit um, to try to get something in place so that at least we can group things by employee role so you aren't saving everything forever because that may not be a problem now because <laughs> email hasn't been long, around for that long, um, but boy, in the future, that's just going to become completely unmanageable. Um, so yes. Oh, go ahead. oh, I was just going to say, so if you aren't a DAS supported agency or if you're a local government, um, talk to your IT department. Find out what their expectations are. I did an all staff training not too long ago where uh, they talked about it as I brought it up and they realized that their IT department was expecting them to keep the record copy. They were only saving backups. So they were saving a backup tape for 30 days, 90 days, something like that. And they were expecting all the employees and the employees didn't know that and they figured that out during my training. So really have that conversation. Find out what's being done and if you are expected to be the record copy holder for your own email. Um, so obviously a lot of, oh yes. So if you're CC'd on an email, yeah. is that considered, that would not it, be considered a, a record? Most of the time, no. But if you are working on a project team and everyone on, the, on that project has decided Pat's going to be in charge, of maintaining the record copy for all the emails related to this project, then yes, um, you would be responsible. But that's part of one of my slides. 
um, in a few slides here. So um, attached documents may be records as well, something to keep in mind. So something that we do internally here, because I've never known, um, I've been here for almost five years, I've never known an environment where we're supposed to put everything on the shared drive. The electronic records management system was in place for me when I started, so, so it's kind of a look into so the future. So spoiled you are. <laughs> a look into the future, right? Um, so if Chris and I are collaborating on a document, I don't email him the document. I email him a link to the record copy of the document um, so that we're actually <coughs> editing in the electronic records management system. And then when it's time to destroy that, it's actually going to be destroyed. And our emails don't have any content. They don't have the document attached. Um, so that's one of the big benefits that I personally have seen, because um, I don't have to wonder where that record copy is. I know that we're using that, that system that way. Um, so it's important to think about email as, you know, the content can actually be predicted. So if I have a position and I'm in, you know, maybe I work on budget stuff, and most of my budget preparation stuff is like, what, four years or something, um, that can be predicted based on my role. I might have a few outliers, but we're not going to plan everything based on those few outliers. Um, if I am Mary Beth Parker, and my retention schedule is basically everything permanent because of my role, and that's written on my special schedule, we can plan for how to retain that. We can put that in the system and have all of her email be filed in there and have a permanent retention on it. Um, let's say I am working in a department and my email has, could have like a six year, seven year, 10 year, if I am not wanting to sort that, maybe you know you think about what kind of employees you have if you don't think that it would be possible for them to sort or maybe they're not gonna sort the right way, you could just go with the 10 years for that person. Um, and that would be something that could be applied at the account level. And even bare minimum, start doing it with departed employees. If you've got a bunch of old email accounts just sitting there, um, you're going to have to keep providing access to them as time goes on. So why not look at the longest possible retention for that type of employee in their role and apply that now? And then it will eventually go away. Um, even if it's just a note to yourself, you know, trash this person's email in five years, that sort of thing. Um, however you can manage it if you don't have an electronic records management system. <coughs> because the alternative is, you know, just... Exploding volume, like I said, here. So fun fact, what you're going to drink. Mm -hmm. um, the largest gorilla, I'm about 600 pounds now that I'm in captivity. Otherwise, in the wild, it was 510 pounds. Interesting. I have to look that up because you're... Oh. I, I will have to go back to whoever first said that phrase in 1930 or whatever <laughs> and call them out on it and be like, hey, not real. <laughs> Um, I've, no. been fact, I've been fact-checked before, but never on the, uh, <laughs> on the <laughs> If that's all there is, you know, it's, I'm, I'm it's Friday. Well, it's yeah. just because it's email Friday. is worse. Yeah, yeah right. We're going to talk about gorillas. <laughs> that's funny. Um, so from what we've seen, the less people have to be involved in managing their own email, the more compliance there will be. So if you can, work with your IT department to get something in place. Um, I, on the other side of things, I've also gone to a state agency and they said, what do you mean? We have a one-year retention on our email. And I'm like, no! Um, stop doing that today, please. Um, so it's not a good idea to, to have your IT department setting their own policies without consulting the retention schedule. Just um, something to keep in mind. And like I said before, email content can be predicted. I only have a certain scope in my duties, right? I'm, I don't have anything that's permanent, personally, that I create. Um, the longest possible retention would probably be retention schedule stuff, and that's, you know, 10 years after superseded. So, um, these are things that we can predict based on someone's position. So, what not to keep? Most of the time, um, FYIs, if I'm just sending something to Chris, hey, thought you should know about this, he can look at it and delete it. He doesn't need to retain that just because I sent it to him. But know how the people you work with do that. So, I think we've all had the boss that likes to send us FYIs, and then you have the question, Am I supposed to do something with this? Are you just that? <laughs> so within reason, you have to know, you know, are you being asked to do something? Then it may be a different animal, but uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, informational notices. Um, so CCs, most of the time when I'm CC'd on something, it's not something that I need to maintain, but that is up to you to look at that and, and think about that. And if, if you're not sure, just keep it. Just yes, keep building it. announcements, heavy yeah, emails. Yeah. Um, elevator under construction, yes. like us. Um, Breaking down for offline. So ads, listservs, if you subscribe to like state eclipse or something like that, mm -hmm. once you've read that, just delete it. There's really no reason to keep that. Even if DAS is keeping everything and you're a DAS supported agency, why not clean up your inbox? Make it easier to navigate, easier to find things. Um, event announcements, you know, turn fund drive, things like that. Um, the person who sent it is responsible for keeping it. Not all, what, 30,000 state employees that receive it. Um, personal correspondence. So first of all, don't have it in there. <laughs> don't do it. I'm not going to email Chris and say, hey, guess what my son did, and go back and forth about all this personal stuff in a state email address. And I'm not saying I'm not going to say, you know, have a great weekend, hope the weather's not, you know, I can throw in pleasantries here and there, but I'm not going to use state email to throw in a bunch of my own personal stuff that I don't want to be discoverable. Because especially, you know, if your IT department's saving everything coming and going, you can't just delete that if it's not a public record. You're retaining it. Um, and alternatively, like I said before, don't use your private Gmail account in your role, in your function for the state. So I'm not going to send Chris a, an email from my Gmail account to his Gmail account saying, hey, can you help me with this presentation next week? Here are my ideas. I'm not going to do that. Um, the higher up you are in the agency, the more important that becomes. So one of the problems we had you know, with Kit Sauber before, and we had talked to him about not using Gmail, and we had talked to Dax, and it still happened. And, you know, you can tell people and just make sure that people know at least um, before they kind of open up all of their personal stuff to being discoverable and sifted through by lawyers, because then you're just going to be paying for that time as well. Um, <coughs> so purge your deleted items folder. I know that sounds funny, but I... Here in Secretary of State's office, we have email quotas. And I cannot tell you how many times people have called me over to their desk to help them because they can't get any more emails. I'm like, have you deleted, I did your deleted folder? And what? Um, so that can really free up some space if you've got those quotas. So articles, reference materials, if I have some nerdy records management thing that I send to my staff, they can read it and delete it. Or not read it, I won't really know. But um, they definitely don't need to keep it around. It's just extra um, stuff to sift through. So this is just kind of something that we throw out there. How many emails do you have that just say meeting or tomorrow? If you can add more details to your subject lines, <laughs> when you get those public records requests, it'll make your life easier to sift through and make sure people know that. Um, just help yourself out in the future. So most cases, internal emails back and forth, the sender is responsible for retaining. If it's an email from an outside source, just keep it as the recipient <coughs> representing your agency. If you use Outlook, if you take one thing from this training, it should be this. Go back to your desk <coughs> and use the cleanup tool. So the cleanup tool takes conversations where maybe we went back and forth 25 times trying to pick a date for this presentation or something. Um, if I hit cleanup on my inbox or on that conversation or on a given folder, it will condense all of those messages into the very last one in the thread and only keep that. It will keep side conversations. It will keep a copy if I've deleted something and resent it or replied with something deleted. It will keep an iteration of that if I threw an attachment in there on one of the replies. Um, it's pretty smart. We've tested it. State Archivist approves of it. So do that. It'll at least make kind of the, the um, volume easier to navigate through. And do it on your set file, too. Do it on your set file. <laughs> for sure. So five actions I like to throw out for people who are overwhelmed, because that's one of the number one things that people ask me about. How do I deal with the volume of email that I have? Um, kind of think of emails as these separate categories and get rid of the things that you can do quickly. So what can you do quickly? Delegate. Here, take care of this, please. Uh, delete something, just get it out of there. Defer, maybe, um, you know, hey, I need to get back to you. Um, I'm waiting for Mary Beth on this. 
text or something like that. Um, respond, yes, here is the answer. Maybe these are gonna be um, kind of that yes or no, those quick ones. And then do, that's gonna be the ones that are gonna take a little bit more time, but we don't wanna get obsessed with those and not do the rest of them that could be quick and we could just get off of our plate so that it's easier to kind of sift through the rest of it. So, <coughs> this is where our job gets really interesting <laughs> because there are always new technologies that are coming forward that we're finding out about. And the obligation to retain records and um, figure out where they fall in the retention schedule doesn't go away because it's a format that we're not familiar with. So what I mean by that is <coughs> social media can be a public record if your agency is using it to convey unique material. So if I go on our State Archives Facebook page and do some sort of unique news release about an event coming up and I don't post that anywhere else, that's my record copy. And I don't own that because when I signed up for Facebook for the State Archives, I accepted their terms and agreements. And their terms and agreements means that they own all of the content that I post. They can do anything they want with it. They owe me nothing. And that's not okay for public records because part of public records law is maintaining an access copy of those public records um, in case they're requested. So kind of the easy way to get around that is um, capture or compose locally. So with our front office, what they do is they will compose something, they'll keep a copy internally, and then they'll just post it on everything. They'll cross post on their blog, their Twitter, their Facebook. Um, and the new one that we are now navigating, and this is, this is where it gets really interesting, is Snapchat. So the new front office staff wants to use Snapchat. And Snapchat doesn't have an API that they've released for any of the vendors that cap capture social media. <clears throat> so Archive Social and Smarsh are kind of the two main vendors in Oregon that people use for capturing social media. They can't capture Snapchat because Snapchat won't release any mechanism to do that. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we had to kind of rig our own in-house solution. And so the reference archivist, Austin, um, came up with a plan to so if you subscribe to an institution Snapchat feed, it basically like, you'll load it and it'll run, it'll like play like a video sort of thing, like it'll do all the different um, posts in a row. So he is recording that with some sort of screen capture recording feature. And he's saving that as the record copy. Because Snapchat doesn't have anything you can export and they don't interface with any other captures. If that sounds like a pain, it is. <laughs> so uh, I would, we're still at the point of it's really hard before jumping into any of these platforms if you don't have a plan for how yeah. to capture it. Yeah. So quick question. Mm -hmm. um, this is you kind of like email. Um, the reason why I asked that question um, is because email sent from an outside source um, is up to the recipient to keep that. Mm -hmm. So let's say yeah. that uh, on right Facebook question. you post yes. um, a meeting or event or whatever and someone replies to that. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And that's where the um, pain points can come in because if you don't have um, something like Archive Social or Smarsh in place that captures it upon creation and archives it, that person can go back and delete it um, and then you will, don't have it. But if it's, if it's something like we have a historic photo of the day for the reference unit and they'll post it and people will say, great photo or this is awesome or something. That doesn't really rise to the level of, of a substantive business related conversation from my perspective. But if it's someone saying, I think I know which bridge this is, my relatives live there during this time, do you have more information about such and such? Then we'll either try to take that conversation off Facebook and do a follow up email where we get their email address and we keep it going there. Or if we answer in there, we'll capture that somehow. And we're in, in talks, we don't even have the social media capture tools in place yet, we're trying to decide which one right now. There's different flavors, so you can, you know, there's, there's <coughs> some that are very effective, but more expensive, and there are some that are a little more manual. So any of you, that, you, you may not be directly involved in this, but most agencies at this point, public facing agencies, have some sort of public uh, social media presence. Often it's posting redundant things, stuff you would have got press releases for, put on your bulletin board, posting on your website. Again, that sort of redundant stuff, not so critical usually. 
Uh, but you do need to monitor it. The key is not just create a Facebook page and say, great, we've got one, and never bother to pay attention to it. Um, and there are simple ways, so if you're not a heavy poster, you can take manual screenshots. That's built in Windows software. You don't have to pay for anything extra. You know, screenshot that and move on. But you do have to pay attention to conversations. <coughs> you are not required to allow comments. You can deactivate that feature. There's no requirement that you create, just like anything else, we don't require that you create any public record. It's just that once created, the burden is now on you to manage them. So uh, think very hard about how you're gonna manage that and have policies in place about how you're gonna manage it so that the roles and responsibilities are clearly delineated. Yes, so if you have a records management policy in place, have something in there about social media. So if it comes up, you don't say, oh darn, we should have had something written down. It's better to have it before something. <laughs> and things like Twitter, there are built-in kind of export features that you can play around with. So text messages. Uh, this is another fun one. Um, who holds them? Probably not you. What does that mean? Um, so Verizon or AT&T don't have a copy of your text messages. So if your employees are using text messages to conduct substantive business-related conversations, you need to have a way of capturing that. What we've done here <clears throat> the front office used to automatically CC their email address, their state email address, on any conversations related to anything work-related. Now, it's not me saying, hey, Chris, I'm two minutes late. Can you copy for me? That doesn't really rise to the level. But um, if I, we just interviewed someone and I say, hey, I have a lot of thoughts about applicant two, um, here are some of my concerns, such and such. That's part of my role. That's my function here. I need to figure out a way to capture that if I'm going to use my phone for that. Um, if you have uh, state-issued devices, there are mechanisms that you can install <laughs> programs um, uh, that will kind of do, be mobile device <laughs> management. So maybe you have it in your policy that if people are using text messages as a way to perform their business function for your agency they are required to use such and such app that is automatically being saved on your server if not they are required to forward that information to their state email address just having that written down um, and making sure people know what their expectations are will help you um, if there's ever an issue or maybe you say, and I've seen people do this, it is our policy that we do not use text messages to conduct public business. We don't allow that. And that's a decision that you're gonna have to make. You're gonna have to weigh that and communicate that to maybe the higher up people who have a need for that because they're just go, go, go. Maybe you do need to have something in place for them. And I can tell you that uh, uh, public records requesters uh, lawyers are well aware that you have this content and they will ask for it and if yep. you produce stuff where they know there should be some texts around it and you don't produce them they will ask for them again um, I've seen a number of court cases around the country where this cropped up um, whether through direct mean direct intent or sort of not thinking about it or people were using this to circumvent public records law and the courts have been pretty unanimous with only a few exceptions across the country and obviously Case law in another state doesn't directly apply here, but the precedent is fairly well set. Yeah, I actually saw this in an Oregonian article just a couple of weeks ago. The reporter said something like, through a request of all of Kate Brown's text messages, I've learned such and such. So this is on their radar. This is something that's been happening. And you don't want to have to go through manually sifting through somebody's phone to copy these things over after the fact. Yeah, that's what you want to have to try to avoid. Um, so in conclusion, just because you're storing things doesn't mean you're managing them. We can help you. So bring us in. Um, we will talk to people who may not understand this. Um, we can be that outside force if you need that internally. We can, I'll send you the PowerPoint if you're interested and you can parse that out and use it for your own um, internal trainings. Look at what your records retention schedule is if you haven't. Um, and if you see an issue with it, contact me, please. So have your own internal policies, know where they are, make sure that people know about them, make sure they're up to date. And if you're going to purchase a new system of any kind to store public records um, or create public records, include all of these parties. Everyone needs to be included um, when you're making those kinds of purchases because it affects everyone. It affects all departments. <coughs> so this is my
my contact information. This is Chris's. And then I threw in Noah's. He doesn't mind. Um, so if you have public records access questions, you can contact Noah at DOJ. So any other questions? I will stick around and people can hang back. Yes? What are your thoughts on 